Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Let's talk week 15 of the National Football League, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, it's counterintuitive, but before I get into this week's games, let me offer a futures play. In my opinion, futures are where you make your big money. In other words, the information gets out, it's very hard to beat 55%, let's say, in terms of betting against a point spread and stuff like that on a weekly basis. But you can make a boatload on futures, especially if you know how to hedge. So this week, let's just realize that somebody has got to win the NFC East. Right? Someone is going to be a division winner and is going to make it into the playoffs. You know this. Right? No matter how bad the teams are. And I know the teams have issues. Right? Coaching issues with the Dallas Cowboys. An inability to beat a team over 500, which is fatal in the playoffs. Right? I get the fact that the Eagles right now are probably down at the local college trying to recruit wide receivers. Right? They, you know, uh, let's just say, with Alshon Jeffrey out, let's face it, Carson Wentz has no one to throw the ball to. Right? They're desperate in terms of the wide receiver situation in Philly. I get it. But with the Redskins and Giants having disqualified themselves, the winner of the NFC East is going to be either Dallas or Philly. Right? I know they have a big game coming up. The point is, you want to be in a position to win and to hedge, regardless of who wins their head-to-head -head matchup down the road. Right? Well, this week is the week to take action. Folks, you know somebody's got to win the division. You know that. Right now, you can get the Philadelphia Eagles at 40-1. to 1. You heard me right. 40 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. All you're trying to do is to get a position for the playoffs. So if the Eagles make it into the playoffs, and if you've already bet on the team they're playing against to win the Super Bowl, you're good. You have a hedge. If you haven't bet on the team they're playing against, then at that point you can say, hey, you know what? I'm playing around with house money here. I got the Eagles at 40 to 1 odds. Right? Let's say you're frowning right now. Let's say you're a Dallas Cowboy believer. Guess what? You can get the Cowboys at 40 to 1 to win it all. 40 to 1. So, my point to you is throw five bucks on the Eagles, throw five bucks on the Cowboys. Folks, you're guaranteed a playoff position. Think it through. You're guaranteed a playoff position. So, whoever wins out in the NFC East, right? You're looking at leverage of 40 to 1. You've paid five bucks, well, ten bucks. Right? Because you've also taken the other team. But you're looking at the opportunity to win $200. Right? Think about it. Suddenly you've gone from 0 to 60. And if lightning strikes, understand the Eagles recently won a Super Bowl. Right? The Eagles were very competitive in the playoffs after that Super Bowl. The Dallas Cowboys on paper have one of the league's passing leaders. They have one of the league's best rushers. They've had stretches where they've looked impressive. If either team is able to right the ship and you have time, right, there's still some weeks left in the season. You have time. If either team is able to right the ship, then you're looking at substantial profits. Right? Keep in mind, too, if they make it out of the first round of the playoffs, no given, 
particularly not in the NFC, but if they make it out of the first round of the playoffs, then you still have leverage you can work with in the second round if you play it right. Let's talk about the games I like this week. Now, some lines have changed. I got the Atlanta Falcons getting 11 points against the 49ers in San Francisco. The lines dropped to 10 and a half. That's fine. I'd still take the 10 and a half. Right? Understand the world just saw the 49ers take out the New Orleans Saints. So casual fans are placing a lot of faith in the 49ers. But understand, this is a sandwich game for the Niners. Right? The Niners, after this, play the Rams. And don't kid yourself. Both teams want supremacy in California as the NFC team to beat in California, right? Niners, Rams, that's always, you know, high stress, playoff atmosphere. Then after that, they have the coup de grace. They play Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks in Seattle. Understand, here in San Francisco, we're openly debating whether Kyle Shanahan should have at least gotten a draw the first time we played Seattle. Right? Pete Carroll pretty much capitulates. Gives him the ball with a minute and a half left, and Kyle Shanahan showed you why he lost that Super Bowl when he was the offensive coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons. Right? Incredibly bad clock management. Didn't run the ball to run down the clock so that if the Niners didn't score, there'd be no time left on the clock. Instead, the Niners gave Russell Wilson a chance to win the game. You know how that turned out the minute I said Russell Wilson and a chance to win the game. Niners lost that game. So here, with the Rams and Seattle ahead of them, The Niners have a game against the Atlanta Falcons. I'm guessing the Niners this week are not going to take this game as seriously and aren't as interested in this game as they are the others. Right? Well, just understand the storm clouds are out. San Francisco's defense gave up 28 first downs. Think about that. Divide that by four. That's seven first downs a quarter against the New Orleans Saints. Understand they gave up 465 total yards of offense to the Saints. Atlanta, this isn't a team to mess with. Now, right, they started the year terribly. Last week they destroyed Carolina, had 461 yards of total offense. Understand, Atlanta is interesting. Like San Francisco, they also have a win over the Saints. And they're 3-2 and two in their last five games. Right? So now, the casinos want me to think this is a double-digit point spread game. I'm not buying it. I like Atlanta getting ten and a half points or eleven if you were lucky earlier in the week I like Atlanta getting the double digit spread here right I like Atlanta getting ten and a half points let's talk about another game I like Denver the current lines nine and a half I like Denver getting nine and a half over the Kansas City Chiefs right let me just say this The secret sauce here is that these two teams played each other earlier in the year. Now, Denver was at home on October the 17th, and they got beaten up by Kansas City. Right? They lost that game 30-6. 30-6. But if you read the fine print on that game, Denver's defense held Kansas City to less than 300 total yards. Denver's defense in that game held Kansas City to only 14 first downs. Right? 14. Right? 
Let me just say, too, I know KC beat New England. I know the public is thinking, hey, they snapped New England's home streak. This team must be back. The team had 23 points against the Patriots. 23. They'll need more than that if they're going to lay 9.5 or 10 points if you got it earlier in the week. Right? They had 23 points against New England. They only had 20 first downs. Right? 20. Denver's a divisional rival. Denver knows Kansas City. Right? They've already played Kansas City. They've already held Kansas City's offense to less than 15 first downs. Denver's on a two-game winning streak. Beat some talented teams. I know the Chargers are below 500. If you look at the numbers, the Chargers shouldn't be. Keep in mind, this Charger team made the playoffs last year, beat Lamar Jackson in the playoffs last year. Right? Understand, Denver just beat the Houston Texans. Folks, the Texans have one of the best quarterbacks in the league, Deshaun Watson. Let's remember, Houston beat Kansas City earlier this year. Right? Denver's just dealt with a great quarterback, just like they're going to have to deal with Pat Mahomes. Right? De Denver's just seen that. Denver's just beaten that team. Let me also point out, too, that this is not the Denver team of early in the year. They have a new quarterback. His name is Drew Locke. He looks a hell of a lot better. Hell of a lot better than Joe Flacco did. Understand, Denver against Houston at over 300 passing yards. I'll be the casino's huckleberry. I'll take the nine and a half points. I like Kansas City getting the points here. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If there are any games you want to discuss in the comment section of this video, if there are any betting angles on the games I've mentioned that you want to mention, whether you agree with me or disagree, Let's try to give the gamblers an edge on the casino. I hope you leave that information in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.